Thank you, Anita. Before I tell you more about our service pins, I'd like us to take a moment to recognise those who have gone above and beyond over the past two years during COVID. The Harriet Grant Service Award pin is presented to nannies and specialty nannies. This award pin named in the honor of Harriet Grant reflects Harriet's dedication to the nanny profession. Miss Grant was a founding member of INA, a founding member of the Association of DC Area Nannies, ADCAN, and was selected as INA's very first nanny of the year in 1990. Miss Grant later went on to be the co-founder of the National Association of Nannies, NAN. The INA Service Award Pin is presented to nanny educators, referral agency owners or their staff, and business owners or their staff who serve in the home, in home childcare industry. The Service Award Pin program originated within the National Association of Nannies in 1995. Thanks to the dedication and generosity of the past NAM members, the Service Award PIN concept will continue on within INA and will share the same goal of recognition those within the in-home childcare industry for their hard work, dedication and commitment to the professional excellence. I would like to congratulate and invite our 2020 and 2021 recipients to stand up if they are here. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our 2022 recipients. Five year pin, Shenandoah Davis.
Hello, everybody. Well, INA is led by volunteers on our board, on our committees, those you may see on stage, and many more behind the scenes. The health of our association at our annual conference this year and always is a tribute to many, many hours of time invested by volunteers over three decades. In 2014, the INA instituted the Meritorious Service Award to honor the service of these volunteers. I wanna share with you the criteria. The INA Meritorious Service Award goes to a member who has been a strong, sustained support, supporter of the International Nanny Association and its mission. Individuals eligible to receive this award cannot receive remuneration for the activities supporting the INA. The individual is a volunteer whose activities support the INA. Membership is able to nominate fellow members for this award. So keep an eye out for prompts later this year for next year. Today on, on behalf of the INA Board of Directors, we will present two awards. But first, now that we're here in person, I wanna recognize the recipients from the last two years. So if our 2020 award recipient would stand up, Kelly Garys. Thank you, Kelly. And our 2021 recipient, Kate Matievich. You know, being all digital, they didn't get that moment. They didn't get their speech. They did do a speech, which are, you can archive, you can go watch it, but come up to them and congratulate them too as well. Their bios are in, in the program for you to read. But we are gonna present two awards today. So I'm gonna bring up Helen McCarthy to present our first award. Our first award recipient is Louise Dunham. I actually wouldn't be standing here today if I hadn't met Louise at Nanny Palooza, along with Sue Downey also is why I am here. I met Louise at Nanny Palooza nearly 10 years ago and she has been a friend ever since. She's always there if you need to talk to somebody, even though she lives down under. And that's a 10 hour time difference, but what's that between friends? Louise started her agency in 1988. And in 1994, she was involved in the campaign to bring in the Victorian Working with Children check. From 1997 to 2000, Louise was president of the Australian Association of Nanny Agencies. Louise attended her first INA conference in 2010. Two years later, she joined the board of directors and held the vice president position and the chair of the ethics committee. In 2012, she started to run International Nanny Training Day, which led in 2016 to bringing, along with Sue Downey, Nanny Palooza Down Under. Her book, The State of Nanny, was published in 2017. Louise is now a valuable ambassador and runs the Australian chapter. When asked, what are you most proud of? Overall, this was her answer. That conditions have got better in Australia, the UK and the USA. We started a movement, Nanny's Rock. Louise's biggest supporters are her team. Shannon and Rachel who have always believed in the vision to keep children safe and healthy by supporting nannies and paying them legally. 
When we asked some friends what they, this is what they had to say about Louise. Kathy Webb said, my life has been enriched simply by knowing her. Inquisitive by nature, Louise is unafraid to question business as usual. Barbara Klein said, I hope Louise knows how much I respect her immense store of knowledge and the fact that she is willing to take the time to share with others. She is also a lovely human who is a credit to the professionalism in our industry. Sue Downey said, Louise is the champion of nannies and truly cares about the industry. She is loyal, wise, and thoughtful. She has high standards and holds our entire industry to these standards. Louise has been a source of inspiration to me. Unfortunately, Louise cannot be here today as she is currently recovering from surgery, but she has recorded this video. In this great honour, I am both humbled and grateful. Unfortunately, I'm unable to be with you there in Las Vegas to receive this award. I'm in fact, by the time you see this, in hospital after having knee surgery and I'll be hopping around like a one-legged kangaroo. I do stand virtually, at least alongside Guy Madaloni of GTM, who's always given so much to the nanny industry. To paraphrase, no woman is an island, though, or ever acts alone. I heartily thank the team that make up our agency placement solutions. We are based, for those of you who don't know, at the bottom of the world in Melbourne, Australia. I'm the founder and original owner of the business, which began in 1988. But three years ago, we took on two more owners, being Rachel Tashini and Shannon Tierney. They are my rocks. Since last visiting the USA for APNA in Santa Barbara in 2019, Australia has battled devastating bushfires, plague, pestilence, and now flood. Our international borders have been closed for over two years, as have many of our state borders. Melbourne had the longest lockdown of any city in the world where we are based. We even, just to finish it off, had an earthquake last year. Placement Solutions is still here and we are here to stay. Like most businesses, our agency quickly went fully remote, leaving behind an office and paper files and we became fully digitalised. The nannies we employed through our 10 section were subsidised for eight months by the federal government. We were able to repay them for their loyalty, calm, resilience and just getting on with the job of keeping children safe, happy and healthy. That's what we do, right? Since we came out of lockdown, there's been a huge demand for our services, outstripping a dwindling supply of nannies. Where have all the nannies gone? Have they all moved to New Zealand? Or are they, as I suspect, working involuntarily, what we call cash in hand, and you in America call under the table? Despite the troubles here in Australia and worldwide, we at Placement Solutions and myself have been so inspired and helped and motivated by our colleagues and like-minded people of the INA and ACNA. You gave us hope, you kept us strong. Please, INA members, never underestimate the importance of what you do to improve our profession and professionalise the nanny sector. I spent five years on the board of INA. It was a great privilege. All the effort and goodwill required to drive the nanny sector forward is done by a board made up of volunteers. We appreciate you. We have come so far in this industry in 34 years. Everybody cringes now when they hear the word babysitter, and I can hear you all muttering at the table, I don't sit on babies. And yet, we still have so far to go. Let's face facts here. Most nannies in this industry across the world are working under the table. I exhort nannies and agency, pick your clients, work only for those who respect and support you as a nanny and pay you legally. I now quickly wish to thank those who have inspired me. Kathy Harrison Webb, at first an educator to me of the American way of hiring and now a dear friend. Sue Downey, bravely taking us on and bringing Nanny Palooza down under 
in 2016, accompanied by Helen McCarthy from England, my international follow-on on the INA board, and a voice for UK nannies, Barbara Klein of White House Nannies, the gold standard of nanny agencies and nanny proprietors. The others I wish to mention and thank are uh, people that I've become friends with and that have inspired me over the years I've been involved in the international nanny sector, in no particular order. Deb Adamo, Deirdre Bellows, Donna Robinson, Annie Davis, Denise Collins, Bailey Silverman, Stacey, Silver, Stacey Stillman, Greta Share, Courtney Gibson, Laura Schroeder, Joe Barrow, Christinata, Shenandoah Davis, Daniel Butcher, these are the ones that will carry us forward with INA. I say we still have work to do. Agencies and nannies, rock on. Bye. A big round of applause for Louise. Thank you. It is truly an honor to have this opportunity to introduce the 2022 INA Meritorious Service Award recipient, Guy Madalone. There is so much to share about Guy, it's truly hard to sum this all up in the time I've been allotted, but I'll try. Guy's career in household staffing began long before he started a New England Nanny Network, I'm, uh, New England Nanny Agency, and GTM Payroll Services. Well, in his teens, soon after his grandfather became ill, he introduced his mother, an RN, to an elderly neighbor on his paper route who needed overnight care for his wife. Two weeks later, another request for elder care came in, and he referred to a friend of his mother's, also an RN. That was the beginning of his start as a home health care referral agency. It was there he saw the family struggling to care for both their own families and the needs of their ailing parents. And in 1991, a New England nanny agency was born. That same year, GTM Payroll Services was launched. And through his 30 plus year career, here we are today. Some highlights include introducing backup care through a New England nanny agency in 10 states to a Fortune 100 company employees being the resident expert for MSNBC, ABC, and numerous print radio and television stations. Publishing his first book in 2004, How to Hire a Nanny, the first of its kind to promote professionalism in the industry. Creating one of the first nanny agency management systems, Nanny Jobs Pro. Since 2012, GTM has been named one of the best places to work 10 years in a row. In 2019, being part of a UN delegation on sustainable business practices for small and mid-sized businesses. And in 2021, GTM eclipsed the 100 employee mark and acquired a professional HR consulting firm. These are just a small snapshot into the vast accomplishments of Guy. In 1991, Guy joined INA and attended his first INA conference. Soon after, he joined the INA Board of Directors and served as legislative chair, internet chair, and was instrumental in INA developing, developing its first website. He has continued to support INA individually and through GTM. Guy says, INA has been so important to me and the industry as we strive to promote industry best practices for the past 30 years. Guy has been an active APNA member since 1993 when it was founded and served on their board. And in 2018, help launched in memory of his dear friend, the Judith Langer Merlin Scholarship for APNA Education with matching funds in her memory. When asked what he is most proud of, Guy shared, I'm extremely proud of the value GTM has been able to deliver to our clients, leading the way with payroll, HR, and insurance services to make their lives easier in making the employer-employee relationship more professional. I'm also quite proud that we currently have more than 15 GTMers that have been with the company for more than 10 years. With experience comes change, and in his 30 years, he's seen a lot. Ever since the infamous 1993 nanny gate shed the spotlight on household tax compliance, the need for education has been paramount in our industry. 
stressing how household workers were employees and not independent contractors, and in 2010, welcoming the Domestic Workers' Bill of Rights, which is now, which is now spreading across the country. The work of educating household employers never stops. Nannies are now viewed more professionally and the perception has changed so that being a nanny is a career choice and not just a babysitting job. When asked who his biggest supporters and mentors are, Guy shared his biggest supporters are his family, his wife, Diane, and his three children, Michael, Elise, and Jeffrey, all of whom have worked at GTM in some capacity. His brothers, Todd and Michael, have been with GTM for over 20 years each. He's proud to count Denise Collins, Judy Merlin, Barbara Klein, and many others as supporters and friends, and wants to recognize Sandy Costantino from Neighborhood Nannies, who also served as INA treasurer for many years. He believes strongly that it is INA's mission to elevate and nurture the quality of childcare throughout the world by establishing standards, increasing awareness, promoting information, and providing support. A huge part of Guy Madalone is giving back to the community. From an early age learned from his parents, he was taught the importance of giving and that shines through with his generosity in supporting Make-A-Wish Foundation and community organizations through volunteering and financial contributions. Here's what his friends had to say about Guy. His best qualities, honesty, integrity, brilliant, generous, kind, Guy is an unconditional giver. He is committed to professional excellence. I respect and value my long-term personal and business relationship with Guy. He's a humble man who is committed to excellence. Denise Collins on Anne's in-house staffing. Smart, charming, true professional committed to our industry. Generous, kind, he has continually evolved with the times to build his business into the successful operation it is today. Amazing resource. He shows up to INA and APNA. When it's conference time, the industry can count on Guy to be generous. Loyal supporter and true advocate for professionalism in the industry. Barbara Klein, White House Nannies. Leadership, expertise in the industry, true professional. He's a great leader for our organization and to all his employees. I'm proud to be part of his organization and the growth over the past 24 years. Melissa Schoonmaker, a New England nanny agency. Please give a warm congratulations to your 2022 INA Meritorious Service Award recipient, Guy Madalone. Well, you said everything I was going to say in my speech, so <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, and Kelly, it was great to be introduced by you and, and all the great things you've done. I'm so glad you were uh, recognized for the same award. And Louise, um, I was told the fact that, like Kathy, I've been able to get to Melbourne, Australia, and visit her and her operation. So I'm just really, really um, happy to share this award this year with, with Louise. Um, although she makes me feel quite old since I've been here so long. Um, in any event, I just wanted to uh, maybe touch on a little thank yous. Um, you know, for me, my mom, and my dad, who passed the last couple of years, they taught me my mother perseverance and my father, you know, to never give up. Uh, to my wife, Diane, who um, has been a tremendous supporter of ours. Uh, she couldn't be here today. We're currently moving our oldest into Manhattan uh, today. Um, so I'm sure she's in the middle of the street yelling at movers and whatnot, and it's just not be her thing. But in any event, uh, she's been a great supporter of mine for all 31 years. Um, and she's the GTM uh, treasury controller. So she has a big part of that. My three children who are journeying in their own paths of success. You know, my oldest, I mentioned going to New York for his next job, real estate financial analyst. Um, and he's helped with GTM with financial models and and uh, data work over the years. And uh, my daughter, who's a, a pre-med student in Boston, uh, she is, uh, has helped with our back to work safety program and being on that committee. 
And then Jeff, who's my, my youngest, he's my high school senior, he's gonna be an environmental engineer. He was really excited about our United Nations sustainability effort. And he's been involved with reducing the paper uh, and being carbon neutral at organization. So uh, really pleased that these guys have helped support and, and be involved. Of course, uh, Kelly mentioned my two brothers, Mike and Todd. Todd had a, uh, was in there 25 years. He had a one year layover for law school, did not go to law school. Now he's the head of operations at GTM. Uh, and then uh, Mike, who is a direct sales uh, representative when he's working his way through college, is now the new sales leadership. And we're really proud of him. Melissa, schoolmaker, they mentioned 25 years of dedication of families and being the director at New England Nanny. Uh, really excited uh, that she joined us as a young young woman and has really come into her own take care of those local families and the 102 gtmers that are currently uh, back on the east coast and well, we have some here on the west coast too but the east coast mostly uh, and a lot of them on zoom so thanks for checking in today guys and uh, you know their entire goal of making hr heroes out of the clients that we serve for their people um, the ina thank you that you've created this forum for professionalizing the industry and, and creating educational support amongst um, professional nannies with the goal of taking great care of children. Uh, it's paramount in their future. My many industry friends um, and partners, you know who you are, and the rest of me forgetting somebody, I don't wanna call anybody out, except for Sandy Constantino, because I was so psyched when I saw her when I walked in today. It seems like it was 1991 I first saw you. You look the same. Um, and that, uh, you know, these friendships have been pushing me, you know, all types of conversations, positive, constructive, whatnot, continue to push me to be the best I can. And I thank you. And as I look back almost the last 40 years of being involved, um, I've just thoroughly really enjoyed helping families, helping families uh, find childcare, or once they found childcare, put the services around them to help them be as successful as they possibly can. And I've really enjoyed being an advocate of recruiters and agencies uh, to do it versus other methods that one might seek. You know, as a high school student, um, creating a home health care registry with my mom, uh, my paper out and referring her to a neighbor whose wife needed to have someone come home uh, or needed somebody in the house for her to come home from the hospital was just kind of the start. And, uh, you know, she really um, not only had all the medical background, but the ability to uh, see this and, and coach me along with uh, running this registry on a piece of paper and how much people would owe us for every hour that a nurse would go in and work in our community, putting ads into drugstores up at churches and so forth, and really kind of old school. I met so many people, and I would never thought, for me at that time, it was just a way to make money for the family. I would never thought that would have been the impression uh, that it made so much an impact in me to, to do this as a career. Um, as I finished up my undergrad degree, you know, I thought nannies um, were interesting. I thought, uh, I thought, you know, it was similar to home health care. But what blew me away was the amount of wealth that I was not familiar with. I was a poor kid, blue collar kid, um, and the wealth that people had that they were willing to spend money for a, a private person in their home to take care of them and their child. And I think that kind of drove me to understand that market more and more and understanding that you know, maybe I need to figure out how to add a lot more value to make some, make some money. So today I'll end this with, I'm very, very proud of our uh, company, GTM, and continuously being named the best place to work. Uh, I've got some really great leaders there. Uh, it's a super culture. Uh, we have over a hundred GTM or families that we're, I'm responsible for ultimately, but collectively we, we're, we take great care of them and uh, over 50,000 client employees. So it's really, it's really been a good run. I'm looking forward to a lot more running with it. And, uh, you know, I want to say INA leadership, I thank you for recognizing me and giving me this opportunity to talk to all of you. And I hope that this inspires future leaders of the association. So thank you and have a great conference. Okay. And I will just echo what Louise said, you know, as someone who served on the board on and off, I was off when I had my babies and back on um, for almost nine years, first as a nanny, now as an agency owner, I want to tell you this organization will only sustain and grow and continue to grow as volunteers share their time, their talent and their skills.
On behalf of the Board of Directors, I want to invite and encourage each of you to get involved. Consider joining a committee, consider joining the board. All right, we have one last little surprise, a little thing that we're going to do. So can I bring up Kate Mativich? I said it right. <laughs> Huh. I think I can, I think I've typed your name that I could actually spell it more than I could say it. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit more about the service pin and the meritorious award. Um, Harriet Grant was a career nanny for over 40 years. As mentioned earlier, she was a founding board member of the INA, co-founder along with Glenda Probst and Eva Harkness of the National Association of Nannies, also known as NAN. She was a co-founder of ADKIN, which is the first and longest running nanny support group in the USA and probably the world, and also the first INA nanny of the year. Harry Grant was a trailblazer for professional nannies long before the INA was even founded. Harriet passed away in 2002 after a brief battle of leukemia, but she left behind a legacy that will live on forever. Harriet's daily ritual included a cup of tea in the afternoon and a cup of tea in the evening, and her favorite thing was collecting teapots. In 2017, when Glenda Probst was the first meritorious award recipient, the board gave her a teapot to commemorate the occasion. Last year, when I won the Meritorious Service Award, it seemed only appropriate to Glenda that she gift me a teapot. This was such an unexpected and profoundly memorable moment that I decided it needed to be carried on. So this year, I gift you, Guy Madalone, and um, Louis Dunham with teapots of your own, and I hope that you will follow in the beautiful memory of Harriet Grant and take this idea to next year as well. Um, I'll leave this for all of you to consider in memory by Walt Waldo Emerson. Do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave it a trail. Cheers. You're all going to be sick of the British voice by the end of this. Um, is there any housekeeping? No housekeeping. Um, can I just remind you all to please visit our vendors over the next 45 minutes. They're all in Central Park in Vegas. Um, raffle tickets are on sale. Let's get those tickets sold because remember, 50% goes to our chosen charity, 50% goes to our endowment. The more we put sell, the higher we can give. Um, they will be on sale. I'll be at the reception table where you checked in for those. They are $5 a strip. Um, our workshops will start promptly at 2.15, so please make sure you are there before. Thank you. <laughs>